All right, guys, today what we're going to be doing is a uh, real simple maintenance job on this Cobalt. be the same for probably a Pontiac G5 or an HHR or any of these other ones that have the same GM body type. We're just going to be changing the front disc pads today. Now, what's I'm not going to um, jack up the other side because we got this on a little bit of an incline, but normally you just kind of turn it to make it a little bit easier for yourself. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave it where it is. And what we're gonna be doing first is we're gonna be taking off the two bolts here that hold the caliper to the frame. So if I can find somewhere to stick this guy here, we can keep some light in here. And these are a 14 millimeter. I said there's one on top and one on the bottom. And then once you get these two off, you'll be able to move the caliper. This should come right off like that. There you go. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of hook it up out of the way. And we work on everything else. All right. So at this point, the uh, actual pads are held in by these metal retaining clips here. And they just slide out. And they just come right out. Now, if you're not changing the rotor, and this particular rotor doesn't have any deep gouges on it, you can usually tell with your finger if it needs to be turned. And if you've already turned it at a machine shop, if it needs to be replaced, I'm not feeling anything like that. So we don't have to change the rotor. But I do like to go ahead and pull the frame off to not just change these clips out, but also to put some grease in here on these, these little pins here. So these pins are supposed to be able to move really nice and easy and sometimes even though these feel like they're pretty good it doesn't hurt to grease them up while you're in here. What we'll be using is some disc caliper um, brake lube, you can, any number of products like this you can use for that. And what I'm going to be using to service this is this AC Delco kit uh, 1710893 and it's got a GM number of 1036667. And what this guy's got inside seal here. What you'll find inside of here is in one kit enough to do the fronts on one car. So you'll have four pads and you'll have four replacement sets of these retaining spring clips. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove this frame so we can pop these clips off and, and grease these guys over here. And that's held in by a 15, a couple of 15 millimeter bolts. One at the top and one at the bottom. And those are in there really tight. So I'm going to have to use an impact wrench on those. There's one. I'm going to have to probably go turn my wheel after all to get this other guy in here so I can remove this. But we're just going to turn the wheel so we can get this other 15 out. All right, we got that wheel turned enough to get this guy in here. Didn't mean to let him drop, but not going to hurt him. Okay, and again, you know, it's another opportunity to take off the rotor and just make sure that we don't see any deep gouging. This guy doesn't look like he needs to be turned just yet, so we're going to put him back on. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside here. We're going to make sure that our wear indicator pins 
are properly in place. Set this guy on some tissue or some blue paper. Got a matching one. Fish out a couple of these clips. Take the old clip, pull it out, make sure that the new one looks the same as the old one. Looks the same. So we've got to push it right into here. I'm not going to install it just yet though because I want to get a, a wire brush and try to brush some of this up. Just going to first make sure that everything looks like it's going to go back together the same. All right, so we're going to take a wire brush, brush some of this up, and then this rubber boot just kind of holds on to the end of this pin. So if you hold the boot while you pull it, it'll let go. And that's what you want to see, nice shiny metal, no corrosion. These guys are corroded. You're going to want to replace them. So I'm just going to go in here and make sure that we do not have any, any corrosion or pitting that would warrant us wanting to do that. These look really good. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to lube them up and reinstall them. I don't have my rubber gloves on today, so I'm just going to use this rag to spread this lubricant around. I'm going to reinstall this guy. A little bit of old lubricant hanging on the end here that will scrape off. And then if you just hold on to the rubber like this, it'll snap right back on. And you just want to make sure that it snaps on. Real simple to do. I mean, this whole thing shouldn't take more than 20 minutes or so. Now on this one I can see there's a kind of like a repaying pin on the end that I didn't see on the other one so I might pop the other one back out to see what's going on with that but no corrosion. I want to have that nice click. So like I said, we're going to pull this guy back off just because it looked a little different. And I guess it's just I haven't done this cobalt before, so I guess it just is different. It doesn't have that piece at the end like the other one does. All right. Okay, so I'm going to wire brush these guys up and pop our springs in and then start the reinstallation. So let me go get the wire brush and clean All right. this guy. So we're just going to give this... A good brushing to get any surface corrosion and dirt out of here. And this caliper bracket's in really good shape on this particular vehicle. You know, with just a little bit of right, light rubbing, I can even still see the original paint underneath here. I was expecting it to be a lot of corrosion, but there's really not that much on here. Which is good. As soon as we get this cleaned out... different paper towel and we'll go ahead and install our clips now. And they just snap in, right? You can see I'm just using my finger. Basically you got on the inside here, you can see there's a couple of tabs, probably better from this angle, right? So you can see these tabs on either side of the bracket, grab it, and then the outer ones are just in position to, to take the, the actual pad itself. All right, so we're ready to put this guy back on. And we're going to torque this up to 85 foot-pounds. If I can find out what we did with our second bolt. There he is. We'll 
torque them in just a minute, but for now, we'll just do them hand tight. From my 15 that I left on the impact wrench. Okay. And then the uh, pads themselves, the one with this wear indicator, and again, these are AC Delco, so they already come with this installed. Those are going to go on the back, back side. If I can get it on correctly, I had it upside down. Okay. And then we got this guy on the front side. All right. So the last thing that we've got to do before we do the torquing down there is we're going to need to compress guy back in so you know your caliper has been pushed out with the wear and with new sh new pads like this you're going to need to push it back so usually just take one of the old pads and then use a tool like this if you don't have a tool like this you can use a c-clamp kind of grab it on the back here same kind of deal you also want to make sure that you haven't added any fluid to the master cylinder to compensate dramatically for the wear because as we do this, it's going to push fluid through the hose back into the, the master cylinder. But shouldn't be a lot of pressure with this, and it's going really easy, which is what I was hoping. A little bit more. As soon as you get it about flush, we should be in position to reinstall. And there we go. All right, so I can back this off. Take this off. I like to always take a look at the surface of this, look for any corrosion, don't really see any, so this looks good. Make sure you got no kinks on this hose, and then you should be able to position this guy back in. Just need to push our pins in, put our two caliper pin bolts back in, and these guys get torqued to 25 foot-pounds. Trouble getting that guy to grab. For some reason, hold on a second. Just don't have him lined up, I guess. Go. All right, guys. Sorry about that little delay here. Let me see if I can. Uh, just some light right here so you can see there's a little notch to the end of the caliper guide pin it has to fit just so into the caliper bracket and so on this guy here we just didn't have it quite resting on that little ledge and that was just enough to throw these threads off so you couldn't get it started that's all that delay up there was so I got these guys hand tightened now and I'm gonna swing back around now and go ahead and do our torque I'm going to do 85 on the 15 millimeter pins. Apologize for the plane going over. And for not having it on tight. Wow, just everything going haphazard here today. Gonna need to get an extension to get in on that one. And these guys go to 25. And that's it. That's all it takes to do this job. I hope this helped you out. Please leave a comment in the bottom if you got any questions. And please remember to like and subscribe if you find these videos useful. Thanks for watching.